Welcome everybody again. That's our part two of our double crypto night. We started this week uh, on Monday at the university with uh, tax and law. And now we're going to go over to part two. It's trade and invest. First of all, a small a few questions to the group here to, to make us know you a little bit better. Who of you owns any kind of cryptocurrency? Please raise your hands. Okay. Who owns more than one cryptocurrency? Okay, perfect. Who doesn't own any cryptocurrencies? You all got cryptocurrencies. Perfect. Uh, one more question. Did anybody start buying crypto before 2016 in here? Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Who started in 2018? Also congratulations. <laughs> perfect. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, I want to introduce myself. My name is Ben Vlakovsky. I am a uh, mind opener at the Lab 10 Collective and I'm a spokesman for the artist blockchain. But it's not about me, it's more about our group of people and how we did start. Um, our CEO, Thomas in here, started about uh, two years ago and he founded the blockchain hub in Graz. The blockchain hub idea started in uh, Vienna, uh, sorry, in Berlin, with uh, Sherman Wojmgier. She is, meanwhile, uh, director of uh, the Institute for Crypto Economics at the uh, Vienna Institute of Economics. And right after she started the blockchain hub in Berlin, Thomas made contact with her and he right started the second blockchain hub uh, in Graz. Meanwhile, there's like uh, eight or nine blockchain hubs throughout the world. And... Uh, well, that was the start for our movement. We all for a non-profit, and we want to translate the blockchain to non-techies, and we want to contact and connect the various players in the field of blockchain throughout Europe and worldwide. Uh, what did we do in Graz? In Graz, we started. We are having the second biggest meetup group in Graz and uh, within the five largest blockchain and Bitcoin meetups in Austria. So you see in Graz there is the second biggest crowd uh, in terms of blockchain uh, related in Austria. Well, yeah, that's about it. Out of this community, the Blockchain Hub Graz, uh, the Lab 10, you see the uh, roll-up over there, the Lab 10 uh, collective formed itself. We are right now 38 uh, crypto enthusiasts, crypto experts out of various fields from all over Austria. And together we are developing the blockchain artists and you're going to hear, hear a little bit more about this. Um, what's more today? Let's talk about today. You're going to hear uh, blockchain basics from Thomas Lechner, also a member of Lab10 Collective. You're going to get a um, quick review about the ICO research and investing from Lucas Götz from Block42. Then we got the blockchain introduction. Thomas, our CEO, tells you everything about the new and upcoming blockchain artists. Of course, we got question and answers. We want to contribute to the community and tell you whatever you want to know. And uh, some very nice things coming up uh, at the end. We got a Satoshi Square. Everybody that doesn't have coins or anybody that want to top up his coins, Coins are prices are rising right now. We got the Satoshi Square. That means people from us are selling coins privately to you. Plus, we have uh, the company Coinfinity that you all know. They started a uh, Bitcoin ATM where you can buy uh, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, and Dash. Yeah. Thank you very much also to Max and Coinfinity for paying for all the drinks. Um, I want to say thank you to Studo and Block42 who also sponsored this event. But I'd say we just start with Thomas and he's going to tell you about the basics of blockchain, the basis why we are all here. Give a warm applause for Thomas, please. Hello everyone, good evening. Um, I'm Thomas from the Lab10 Collective and we are the first blockchain incubat incubator here in Austria and a bit beyond maybe. Um, we started in 
late 2016 in our first uh, initial project or that got us started was the blockchain startup contest that we hosted here in uh, Graz. This was an event uh, where we invited more than 80 blockchain startups from around the world to participate and to compete against each other. Um, and they competed, I think, for around 10,000 or 15,000 euros of, of prize money that is now worth more than yeah, a few hundred thousand because it was in uh, Ethereum. And this was very interesting for us as a collective because we got to know these very young blockchain startups before the hype began in 2017. And some of those startups that participated um, got investments of more than a few hundred million dollars in 2017. So this was for us as a start very interesting to get an inside view um, into those startups. In 2017, we um, started a few projects, uh, research projects and so on, and we also hosted a, a blockchain um, game on the, on the facade of the Kunsthaus in Graz here, where you could play a board game and mine cryptocurrency by using your thoughts and your time while collecting money for uh, charity, for, pr uh, for privacy organizations. So, and where we are right now as a collective, we started last year, 2017, end of 2017, our main project that we are putting most of our resources in right now. And this is uh, Artis that Thomas will talk about a bit later. Artis is a whole blockchain ecosystem um, that focuses around the idea of subscription economy, of sharing economy. And uh, that's also the topic right now, what is a blockchain? Maybe some of you, or maybe most of you, already know a bit about it. Maybe some don't. So my task for now is to bring you up to par uh, so you can enjoy the evening. So what is blockchain? Uh, basically, a blockchain is a very simple bookkeeping program if you think about digital money, like Bitcoin, for example. Um, you can see it as a, as a table or a database uh, visualize it as some kind of Excel spreadsheet maybe. So in the f sense of Bitcoin digital money, you have a sender, you have a receiver, you have an amount, plus you have some metadata like a timestamp and so on. And that's basically it. So what is all the fuss about blockchain right now that it's so hyped? Well, the thing is we as, as humans, we um, as a society, since almost the beginning of time, we have those central authorities that we have to believe in, that we have to trust. Talking about uh, money again as an example, um, we have to trust banks. We have banks where we have an account and first of all we have to trust them that with every transaction we make that the receiver is correct, that the amount is correct, that the timing is correct of the transaction um, and furthermore, we have to trust them with our accounts so that the communi communication to us as, as customers is correct. So when I go to the bank or when I open my online banking account, that what they tell me is true. I, I, ha I have to believe that it is true. And in 2008-ish, um, the voices that those central authorities are maybe not something you can believe in, got louder and louder. And this was also the start of the blockchain, maybe a bit before, um, that a few people thought about, okay, we don't trust these central authorities, these central networks anymore, so can we ideate something where we not only don't have to trust the central system, but where we don't have to trust anyone at all? So that is it possible to create a decentralized system where you don't have to know who is running the system and you don't have to know if it's a good guy or a bad guy? But the only thing you have to trust is the system itself. And that is the powerful thing about the blockchain. So let's go back one step, uh, talking about digital money, Bitcoin again. 
um, just to showcase how something like this works for you as a user. Basically, what you do is, uh, it's similar to, to banking. You have an account or some mask on your computer, you enter a receiver address, you enter an amount, and you send it to this decentralized network that I was talking about, where there are people that are hosting this network that you don't have to trust at all. So it gets sent there. Um, these computers that are running this network, they pile up these transaction messages, and when they have an collected enough, they validate these transactions via cryptographic measures. And after that is verified, it gets published to the blockchain, to a network or to a database that everyone can look at. And you as a receiver, you see that you're now in possession basically of uh, these data, of these coins, of this digital money. So these guys that are running this system are called miners. And they validate the blockchain, they secure it, and therefore they get a share in it basically. They get a bounty in Bitcoin, for example, for the Bitcoin blockchain. And as you maybe all he uh, heard in the media, these calculations are very energy intense and uh, they burn a lot of energy. So why is that? So let's take a bit deeper dive in this validation process. Um, I told you that you as a customer, you send this transaction message into the network. And then it gets stored basically in boxes until a box is full. When the box is full, you put on a sticker with the number of the box on it, with the timestamp on it, and very important, with a reference to the box that came before, so you can exchange the boxes. So basically, you put in those uh, transaction messages in the box until it's full. Then the box gets closed and you put a lock on it. But the thing now is that you don't have a key for the lock. So when the lock gets put on, a message gets sent out to everyone running the Bitcoin or the, the blockchain. Um, and all those guys that have their computers running, they now compete and look for the key for this lock. And they are running billions of transactions every second, every second. And after around maybe 10 minutes, someone in the world finds a key, he locks this lock, puts on the sticker and shouts, hey, I have the key, look at it, you can verify it, please give me my Bitcoin. Um, and it goes on and on and on like that. And when more and more boxes get on top of each other, it gets more and more secure. So why is that that it gets more secure? If you look at this, for example, here we have an example. Um, Imagine that everyone in the network is working on this last block, the block 91 in this example that is on top of every other block. And some bad guy comes in the game and wants to change the block 74, for example. So what does he have to do? First of all, he has to change this block and um, calculate it. Then he has to solve all the 18 blocks from 74 till 90. So he has to run all those billions and billions and billions of calculations to find all the keys. Plus, he has to solve the block 91 before everyone else in the network, everyone else that is competing and all the 10,000s of uh, computers running on it and uh, trying to find the solution. So that is what makes uh, the blockchain so secure, basically. So what have we, have we heard so far? Basically, the blockchain is not more than a spreadsheet or an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, everything is transparent from the beginning on. So if you imagine, for example, the Bitcoin blockchain, you can check all transactions that happened from 2008, 2009 until now and can look at everything. The second thing is it's the first time that a technology made it possible to go from a centralized network uh, where you have to trust some authority into something where you don't have to trust anyone, where everyone can be anonymous. Um, and this anonymity, anonymity makes it secure, or because of, or, although it's anonymous, it's secure. And no chance for bad guys, so nobody can alter with it. So, what have you heard so far? Digital money. 
we've heard about digital money, um, but it's only money for now. And some guys uh, early on and uh, focusing on 2013, 2014, the ideas came more uh, pronounced that they thought, okay, maybe we can do something else with it, with a blockchain like that, with a system that is decentralized, with a system that we can fully trust uh, and where everyone is anonymous. And they came up with the idea that maybe, oh, first of all, that value is not only money, and the second thing, that maybe you can build something like a decentralized uh, computer, like a decentralized world network or operating system on such a blockchain, where you can um, create computer programs or something on it. So they came up with the game-changing technology of smart contracts. Smart contracts are basically contracts or short uh, yeah, pieces of code where you can input something like a, a computer program or, com or create something like a computer program. And by doing so, you write it on this blockchain and these computer programs, they run autonomous without um, you having to, to put them on your PC or whatever. So this means you don't have any intermediaries and these systems run as long as the blockchain runs. So for example, one, one example here is um, to, to make it easy for you to understand, you could make a smart contract for insurances. And this is a thing that one of the startups that participated in our blockchain startup contest in 2016, they had this idea to put uh, insurances on the blockchain. Um, and the first thing they did was a flight insurance. So if you book a flight and the flight is canceled, you get some money. So what is the good thing here is you can build a completely decentralized insurance. This means you don't have to have an insurance company at all. So you just have to have this piece of code and that's all you need. This makes it, of course, efficient, um, lowers the costs. And the very interesting thing is that it's transparent from beginning to end. So every customer that does that can look at the code and knows um, what happens at what time. And you don't need to, to have some people at some insurance um, and talk to them about if you get money or not, because everything is transparent. So how does something like that look? Basically, they created a website where you can enter the flight dates. You can then select the flight. And then it's basically something like a bet. So you enter premium. In this case, it's, I think, $45. And in case the flight gets canceled, you get around $300. All you have to do now is you have to open your um, wallet. In this case, it's a MetaMask Ethereum wallet that lets you interact with the blockchain. You send the money there, and in case the flight gets canceled, you get a payout. As simple as that. Of course, there are thousands or millions of other possibilities that you can do with such um, smart contracts or little programs on the, on the blockchain. So for example, you can do financial services in terms of lending, um, you have the, the whole area of property. For example, Sweden is al already putting um, property rights on the blockchain. Um, governmental services with re registration and so on. What's also very interesting is the, the area of identification. So for example, access control, you can imagine that for some services, you need to, for example, have a certain age, like you have to be 18, but nobody needs to know your gender, for example. And this is very interesting because right now with uh, passports, everyone knows everything. Um, you also have the area of internet of things that could be very interesting in the future where you could build uh, complete autonomous systems that run for themselves. Or the area of trade uh, that is already used right now by companies such as IBM and so on, um, especially in logis logistics where you have companies that have to um, have to transparently see everything that is happening during the whole process, but don't trust each other, for example. So you have tons of opportunities that you can do, ideate on everything and try out new things, and that is what's happening right now in this whole area. 
that a lot of companies, they just experiment. And that's also what we do at the Left Hand Collective. We experiment with the blockchain and we try new things. And as I told you, the, the thing we are trying out right now is this blockchain ecosystem artist that is using a lot of those possibilities and allows new creators to come in and to, to uh, create on our ecosystem. And Thomas will tell you a bit more about that later on. So stay tuned for that. I think the time is already running. So for now, thank you. If you have questions, I think we have time later on. Just get back to me and we can have a drink and talk about it. Thank you right now. So thank you very much, Thomas. Oh, it's a bit, little bit louder now, even for my voice. I'm going to take here. Thank you very much for the quick introduction. Thomas is preparing the other slides. And uh, I want to introduce on the stage uh, Lucas Götz from Block 42. Maybe he has the answer on anything or everything. Who knows? The stage is yours. Thank you. So, hello, my name is Lukas. Um, I'm the co-founder of Block42, together with my colleagues, Michael and Chris. Hi. <laughs> uh, we recently founded the Block42 blockchain company. We are based here in Graz. And coming from a strong personal interest um, two years ago, where we started to invest in blockchain projects, um, started to invest in cryptocurrencies, um, we now decided to found our company. Um, doing exactly this, um, namely investing in blockchain startups, investing in cryptocurrencies. Um, but we try to also offer different services like um, offer consulting for companies who would like to access the blockchain space, um, offering also some kind of trainings and yeah, that's, that's our company. Today, I'm talking about the ICO research and investing in cryptocurrencies. And I'm uh, at the beginning, you were asked who knows about cryptocurrencies, who are already invested in cryptocurrencies. So um, most of you are already familiar with the topic. Um, but I always have some problems describing someone what I'm doing, what is an ICO, what are cryptocurrency tokens. Uh, one way would be to just have a description like that. But I would like to explain you the initial coin offering as well as cryptocurrency tokens with a small example. Who knows which bridge is shown in this picture? Who is able to read? <laughs> right, that's the Kepler Brücke. Um, you can see it. Um, from the year 1920, Google said to me, um, and let's suppose the city of Graz decides to build a bridge to, to connect the east and west side of Graz. In the traditional way, uh, the government would delegate this task to a bridge building company who builds the bridge, gets the money for it, and the thing is over. Put the same example into the context of cryptocurrency tokens. Early investors would be able, before the bridge is built, to invest in the bridge building project. And for every investment they make, they will get in return a token for passing the bridge one time. So once the bridge is finished, um, the investor is allowed to pass the bridge one time, paying one token. Um, the advantage for the investor is that he gets this, this bridge passing token very cheap. So let's suppose he has to pay one cent for it. Once the bridge is finished, the city of Graz, um, once every inhabitant of Graz for passing the bridge, that they have to pay one dollar for passing the bridge. So the investor can now sell its tokens he bought very cheap. Um, can sell the many tokens he already has for one million for for one dollar per token. So that's the way um, cryptocurrency tokens work. Um, they are there for funding projects, 
um, in the blockchain space. And yeah, the second thing is the initial coin offering. The name is derived from the initial public offering, IPO. So in the same example, an IPO would be the bridge building company offers its company shares to the public for the first time. The same example with an ICO and with cryptocurrency tokens, as I already said, no company shares are offered, but the tickets, the tokens for passing the bridge are sold very cheaply. So why is that important? A lot of blockchain companies found a way of doing ICOs, of tokenizing the business um, in order to get funded for their projects. And as you can see here, a lot of money is put in the cryptocurrency space. Especially in the year 2017, um, nearly, nearly 4 billion US dollar are put it in ICOs um, just in the month from October to November 2017. And comparing that number with uh, traditional venture capital, you can see it's nearly the double of money. So we decided as Block42 to gain from this development to invest in blockchain startups. Okay, we'll show it at right. Okay. Um, let's compare the blockchain market with other markets. Let's suppose one little white square stands for $100 billion. The blockchain market is about $400 million billion dollar right now. The world gold reserves in comparison to that are about 7.7 .7 trillion US dollar. And the world stock market, the whole capitalization of the world stock market, um, we are talking about more than 70 billion trillion, I'm sorry, 70 billion US dollars. So if just a small amount of money went from the stock market to the blockchain market, we will see more years like the last year, 2017. Our approach as Block42 is we invest in the blockchain projects of the future. Our goal is to invest very early in the next Googles, in the next Facebooks, in the next Amazons. And we are sure they are founded right now or in the next few months and years. Our approach is based on three main parts. The first one is the research where we are looking constantly for new investment opportunities, where we are um, performing a fundamental research compared with deep market understanding. So we have to know how is the mark market um, developing in order to get um, appropriate investment options. The second thing is the portfolio management. We have to constantly decide which new investments we should perform, which um, current projects we would like to sell because um, maybe we do not see any long-term potential behind the project. And the third thing is the security aspect. All of you who already invested in cryptocurrencies um, uh, maybe know that, especially in the cryptocurrency space, it's extremely, um, yeah, you can make a lot of mit mistakes, let's say like that. Like that. Like, like that. Um, nobody is there, no central authority is there to revert your funds if you got hacked. Nobody is there who revert your funds if you send them to a wrong address. So it's extremely important to know what you're doing, to know what you are, where your private keys are, are and yeah, that yeah, you perform very securely. We try to invest smart money and gain from late money. What does it mean? Here you can see a typical process of an tokenized project. At the beginning, there's the idea, there's the, um, some founders of the company have the idea they would like to do a, project, a blockchain project. Um, and they decide that they will set up a token and get money via an initial coin offering. So, I already described what the ICO is. Before the ICO, there are also some events, like the public presale or the private presale. What does it mean? 
um, the founder of the company offer some smaller groups of investors um, to buy the tokens for a better price, so they get the bonus. Um, in order to, they have to put in more money in the project. So it's like in a venture capital way, um, you can say it's like a seed round, where the ICO is maybe the Series A funding round. After the ICO is finished, some weeks ago, uh, later, um, the coin gets listed on an exchange. And from that moment on, you are, you are able to trade the coin with other coins. So you can sell the coin or buy the coin again. And what we try is to get in these phases, where, where we invest in very early stage projects, where there's no hype already at the, at the project, and where the fear of missing out, the so-called FOMO, um, not already happened. So when the project gets very hyped, a lot of people would like to go in the project, would like to have the coin, and, and generally the price increases very strongly. So our approach is to invest in these phases. So regarding our investment process, we divided the process in several steps, starting with the opportunity identification. What does it mean? We try to find the hidden gems. Like I said before, we try to find projects which are very early stage, where we can invest very early in the phases. For each project we, um, we would like to invest, we perform an evaluation and risk assessment. So we gather several data points of the project. For example, the, the idea behind the project, the team, the advisors, the tokenomics, and rate every blockchain project regarding these, these data points. The result of the evaluation is a rating. So we rate each project from A to T. And based on the rating, we perform our investment actions. After the investment, we start the monitoring of the investment, which means um, we constantly check what, are the, what is the process the, the project perform, and should we sell the coins again, or maybe perform a rebuy of the, of the project because we think, okay, there is a long-term potential. Regarding those data points, um, we divide that into two parts, in the qualitative data points as well as in the quantitative data points. The qualitative data points, we look on things like what is the project stage. So it's a big difference if you invest in a project which is just in the white paper phase or a project which already has a prototype where I can test it, where I can see, okay, the, the, the team is able to deliver the results. The second very important thing is the idea behind the project. Is there a real blockchain use case? Unfortunately, a lot of projects are out there where we are asking ourselves, why do they need the blockchain for that? So um, we try to distinguish between those projects where the blockchain is really needed, uh, where a long-term potential is, is there, and those projects will just use the blockchain word as a buzzword and um, yeah, use it as a way to get more funds. Of course, the team as well as the advisors are very important facts for us. We look at the track record of the team, we look at the skills, are they able to perform the, the results they, they promise? And of course, what is, the, what is the roadmap? So what are next important milestones on the roadmap and when do they plan to reach them? The second part um, is about the quantitative data points where we look at f on facts and figures, like how big is the community? How many members do they have in a Telegram channel? Um, how is the sentiment of the community? Or what are the token sa sale details? So we look at the hard cap of the project, which means how much money do they want to raise in the in, in the public sale? Um, how many of the tokens do they give out to the public and how many of them do they cap for themselves? And all of this information we 
put them in our software where afterwards the software gets a rating for the coin. And based on the rating, we perform our investment actions. So what's coming next? A lot of people I talk to say, yeah, okay, um, the blockchain and cryptocurrency and Bitcoin, it's just a bubble and it, it will burst. I think it won't. Why? Why do I think that? Because what we see right now is that a lot of institutional and money, a lot of traditional investments now switch to cryptocurrencies. We see a lot of indicators for that. Um, for example, the Rockefeller uh, venture capital arm is moving in cryptocurrency, which was announced on 10th of April this year. George Soros, with a um, portfolio value of $26 billion, decided to go into cryptocurrency. JP Morgan, a big bank in the USA, um, once said, okay, cryptocurrency, it's a fraud, it's a scam, um, reverted their, their statements and now say, okay, the blockchain is real, um, they plan to go in cryptocurrency as well. And there are a lot of investors telling the same, like Wellington Management with a um, portfolio under management of $1 trillion, they decided to go into the cryptocurrencies. So think back on the chart with the stock market and the blockchain market. If only a small portion of the stock market is moving in the blockchain market, we'll see huge gains. And I would like to end my presentation with a comparison of the Amazon share price. Um, we've seen this chart shows the, the development of the share price from 1989 to 2001. So in the mid of 1989, we are here about at, at 10 points for one Amazon share. In just a half year, the price uh, went up to about 100 and more points to just fall back two years later, back to 10, 10 points. And at this time, a lot of people say, oh, okay, the dot-com bubble burst, um, internet and all this stuff, there's no future for that. And then came the years after 2001, where the Amazon share price increased from 10 points up to 1,000 points right now. And the small um, figure I just showed you can be seen here. So what does it mean for crypto? We have seen drawbacks, especially in the last few months of 2018. Uh, we will see some drawbacks in the future, I'm sure. But in the end, in the long run, um, cryptocurrency, blockchain technology will um, be very big, very great, and I think nobody will stop this revolution. So, this is a statement which was taken at the World Economic Forum. There was a survey um, at the members of the World Economic Forum in the year 2015, so it's nearly three years ago, um, where it was said they think in the year 2025, 10% of the global GDP will be stored on the blockchain. And if you can nearly estimate what are 100% of GDP and what are the 10% from that. Um, that's really a huge amount of money. And so I think that will be, um, yeah, will be a big thing. Thank you for your attention. I would like to highlight our Telegram news channel of Block42. Feel free to join. We, um, we post some updates of cryptocurrencies. We do a lot of evaluation of new ICO projects. Um, we have discussions in this channel, so feel free to join us and get in contact with us. Thank you. So, thank you very much. While Thomas is fixing his preparation, his presentation. Uh, next on is Thomas Zeinsinger, the CEO and uh, founder of uh, the new artist blockchain. And the good thing is we are all now experts on ICOs, ICO review, 
and uh, we can start using the learnings from the last uh, great speech we just heard and uh, you're happy invited to rate the new upcoming ICO that Thomas is going to present to you right now. Thanks. So, hi. Hi, everybody. So, I will talk about artists and uh, we'll talk a little bit more uh, about technology as well as for uh, the uh, initial coin offering or initial token offering as we as we are going for and as we are starting tomorrow actually with with the token offer. Um, so the artist blockchain uh, has the tagline uh, or I put the tagline there that we stand for streaming money uh, and the fair coin distribution and uh, because we did a lot of examples in the past uh, where people confused uh, a blockchain system with a on the Ethereum blockchain application, I would like to stress Artis is a self-standing infrastructure. It's a self-standing blockchain. So just be clear about that, that we are not kind of, although we are using Ethereum code base, we are a separate kind of blockchain which is running on its own infrastructure. So what is important for us is if you look at blockchain projects, a lot of blockchain projects do a lot of things regarding economics, but they don't really care so much about the other things which make them sustainable. So the, the space itself is developing, but on the other side, it's a very high, high focus on economics. We believe that it has to have a certain focus on ecolo ecological topics, what you can hear in the news all the time because blockchains consume a lot of energy uh, or some of those or well the, the known ones let's say and uh, on the other side uh, the social aspect so you know it's like although here like more than more than 50 percent already have crypto coins uh, we're really the exception if we look at our relatives so i i, I did not try to explain to my father uh, how cryptocurrencies work. He was just afraid that something bad could, could happen to the family own, uh, ownership of some property or so. So I could kind of waste all the family stuff on crypto coins. And I think you probably know some people which have a similar kind of perception towards that. But nevertheless, sustainability for the blockchain systems will be a very important thing in the, in the near future. So, talking about the artist blockchain, I said already, so we are uh, having a focus on having not this high energy consumption. So, you probably have heard the numbers uh, that currently uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin together are using as much electricity as Austria. So, it's just a nice coincidence that currently we are kind of close to Austrian electricity consumption for those two blockchain systems. Uh, so, talking about what one transaction consumes in diesel or, uh, yeah, in diesel, in, in, in gas, basically you're, uh, you need about 10 liters of diesel for one transaction on Ethereum and more than 100 liters for one transaction uh, on Bitcoin. So, this is kind of a thing which was discovered rather early that it has to be solved. Uh, but still, a lot of chains are working with a kind of high-consuming proof-of-work consensus mechanism. And whoop, I didn't do that. <laughs> so, um, and uh, we have there uh, a different one, which is, which is not consuming that energy. Using proof-of-stake for the techies uh, among you, uh, we are using Tendermint. Tendermint uh, is uh, uh, very... Uh, well, a very fast kind of consensus mechanism where we actually have five seconds of block time uh, and finality on every kind of transaction what we are doing on this one. The second one, which is a technical innovation, which is more referring to the economical part, is stream. And we call it stream because we stream money. And that's also kind of hard to grasp, grasp kind of technical innovation. Currently, you have something like a money is transferred at a certain amount, at a certain time, to somebody else. If you look at this one, in, with streaming money, you're actually transferring a kind of flow 
towards somebody else's account. So you're starting a flow and you're stopping a flow whenever you want to. And while it is flowing, your account is decreasing the value of coins which are in there and the other account is increasing while receiving the stream. And that's continuously. So basically, whenever you look, you see a changed value in your pocket. And that kind of, kind of innovation opens up new kinds of business models, everything you can think of time-based kind of payments. And because it's not, it was not there yet, uh, it is expected that things which you could not do in the past will be done with that kind of concept. Uh, and as far as I know, and basically I'm in the space as, as it was already mentioned, um, since 2016, I, I can't recall any project which is working on that kind of concept, kind of implementation for that kind of money flow from one account to the other. So that's a very new thing. It was suggested on Bitcoin Talk in 2013. So uh, it was highlighted that there a guy, he was like, wouldn't it be great if we would have that? But of course, 2013, the technology was not there. Uh, with Bitcoin, you can't do that. And therefore, uh, it has had to wait kind of for Ethereum-like uh, technology. So the third one, which is going into this social area, is something where we uh, want to reduce the entrance barrier. So currently, as you know, you can't interact with a blockchain if you don't have coins yourself. So you have to get somewhere some coins. I mean, today it seems it's rather easy to get some coins, and we have the ATM outside, and a lot of people in here have have some coins in their pockets or on their on the mobile phones. But generally, if you would say that a bigger public is interacting with a blockchain, they would need to get some coins uh, to interact with that kind of particular blockchain. What we want to do with Artis is to have a very, very broad distribution, not through kind of selling through exchanges, but through giving out coins to registered people in the system. And in our case, it will be a very high amount. I will go into detail there as well. So important that we are reducing en uh, entry barriers for people to use blockchain systems because currently use is very much limited to crypto kitties and, and some value transfers and then we're more or less not there yet that people actually can interact with that kind of systems. So why are we so excited about streaming money? So streaming money let fl cash flow literally and the interesting part on the technical side is that you need just a transaction to start and a transaction to stop. It doesn't care how long the money flows from one account to the other. So it could be a lifelong kind of payment towards your insurance. It could be a wage. It could be any kind of payment you can imagine, which is sort of time-based. You can introduce... Um, introduce uh, payments like for energy. You can adjust that payment within between with just another transaction. So all the time, basically, the money is flowing to the other one and immediately usable by the other account. And because, well, we were constantly asked for, for kind of examples, we said, well, that would be great for subscriptions as well. So if you're looking at subscriptions, if you're doing subscriptions today for a newspaper or for, let's say, any kind of online service, it's extremely hard to do or it's extremely inconvenient. You have to be, uh, have to be working on, uh, on, on, on kind of being registered to pay for something which is rather low in, in the value of what you're actually doing. So we, need a, we made an implementation, um, or we made a, a, a demonstration. Let me see. Um, 
So we did a demonstration where we show how it is if you apply for a, a subscription for on the presser. So basically, you go there, you say, okay, I want to do a subscription. You say 30 euro cent per day, finished. And that's the other process which is usually uh, kind of introduced to you. You have to register something, uh, yeah, give in all your details. Um, well, yeah, a couple more things you have to tell them. Uh, you have to remember your password, of course, uh, and I hope you have a good password manager. I'm, I'm worried about this short one. So now you're deciding how you want to pay, and uh, you say, well, that's me. I have this IBAN and so on. So this is like, that's the normal process. I mean, uh, I'm wondering, well, this is already kind of just showing how it is done in a, in a kind of optimal way, because usually I would have to look up my IBAN uh, somewhere, and now we are kind of close to finished. So that's the, the difficulty you kind of see in all these kind of subscriptions where we don't really wonder why it is so tedious to do. Uh, but if you're just looking at the other possible way how you can do it, it makes a big, big difference because it's a convenience factor. So you're just like, you're paying, you're using that kind of service, you stop paying, you can't use the service anymore. So that's a very simple thing, but you don't have to register, you don't have to go in there, you just start it and you're done within a couple of seconds. So that was stream. And now regarding the coin distribution, um, of course you always get this question, are there a kind of limited finite number of coins in artists? We will have uh, 21 billion ATS, which is the coin on the on the artist blockchain. Uh, so there is this is not a coincidence. Yes, yes, we kind of referred to shilling, and um, so um, the the kind of release of those coins works in a very similar way, like we know from Bitcoin. So basically, uh, the, the the money is coming in, and then it takes kind of a hundred years to reach those 21 billion. So after 10 years, you can expect something like 10 billion of ATS which are released to the system. Um, within the system, we have a couple of roles. Uh, we have the trust nodes, we have the free nodes, the registrars and the members. And the trust nodes, they are the ones which basically write the blockchain. They do the blocks, they do the consensus, they kind of generate the the transaction lock actually for for the artist blockchain. The free nodes, they're kind of like master nodes, like you, you know from Dash, basically you have a, a second layer. Uh, in, in the case of artists, they will be responsible for payment channels and for storage. So let's say those are the two major things what we're looking at in the very beginning. And of course, because uh, the things you can do uh, with that kind of technology, there will be business models for those which run free nodes as well, uh, additionally to the, to the reward what they get actually running a free node. So trust nodes, free nodes, registrars and members, they all get coins in that kind of system. Um, the registrars, they are the ones which actually bring in the people into the system. So they are kind of the the web of trust people which actually bring in the members to the system. And the users, they are basically, it could be everybody who just kind of bought himself some coins and interacting with the chain. So it's a public chain, everybody can interact. You don't have to be kind of registered in the system, of course. So how is the distribution? Everybody wants to know that also from we heard this from block 42 uh, that it's important to know how the how the basically distribution of coins is is done. Um, we are down here. We have seven percent for the crowd sale, which is uh, 
starting tomorrow, as said, 5% for the Altis Foundation, 2% for projects, as you again would know from the Dash system, basically putting some money aside for uh, doing projects. 1% uh, for the Lab 10 Collective and 1% 1 1 for team and early supporters. Um, and 3% for the trust nodes, 3% for the free nodes, 2 for the registrars and 75% for the members. So basically giving out a huge portion of money actually to members out there. And we're talking about hundreds of millions of people. So basically giving them just enough to interact with that kind of system. So that's important that they are kind of able to interact with that kind of system. And then we talk about the network effect, as you know from Facebook and others. So having just uh, a huge amount of people being able to use uh, business models running on that, on that blockchain. So, uh, talking a little bit more about the token offer, as I said, so tomorrow uh, it starts. Um, it will be a minimum investment of 0 0.1 ETH uh, per person and, uh, and one ATS will be 1.5 euro cent. So, we are slightly different than many of the ICOs you actually uh, kind of see or know. Um, we start tomorrow and we have a time frame until end of September where you basically can get your ETH back, what you put into the smart contract. At the 30th of September, there's a lock date. So basically, until, uh, from there on, you can't get your ETH back and at the national celebration holiday, uh, we are creating the ATS. So basically having the shilling on the right day. Um, so then all the, the ones which are in there actually have, uh, will get their tokens. So of course, everybody's asking about uh, kind of bonuses. So if you invest early, you will get uh, a 10 percent per anno which means for the time frame till the tg it's about four percent what the ones will get which invest early uh, at the beginning of the of the sale and don't pull out the money until basically the 26th of uh, of october and um and the 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 private sale is continuing as well. So basically the private sale will go on as well. Uh, and the private sale is above 100K in Euro and uh, it will have 10% flat uh, of, uh, of bonus. So as I said, uh, we are having those kind of roles in the system. Uh, we have the registrars, the free nodes and the trust nodes. Um, the registrars, they have a staking requirement, so they all need to stake something to run those kind of nodes or be in that kind of role. And the staking requirement for the registrars is like 500 euros or 33,000 ATS, the free node 10,000 euros, and to trust note approximately 50,000 euros. And of course the staking is in that coin. And basically you get the node rewards and you get the kind of rewards uh, and if I just go back on this one, so basically this one which is paid out here is based on, on the ones which actually do the staking here and run, uh, run the whole blockchain system. So, so as, as you can see, we are building a whole blockchain system. Everything is there which you probably know from other systems and of course uh, therefore it's a little bit more complex than a, a classical token sale for a certain kind of startup project. So how does the token offer process uh, work? Get your ETH, of course. If you don't have Ether and you would like to invest, uh, you can do that today. Uh, and uh, we are we're happy to help on this one. Uh, get whitelisted and transfer Ether. So basically on the website, uh, you will see a screenshot. There is a kind of form which has to be filled where we collect all the information which is actually needed for us to change that into the banking system. Because currently, if you're exchanging uh, digital assets like, like, uh, like Ether, 
um, basically there is no KYC required in Austria. The only thing you have to collect is an email address and uh, uh, we, are, we are definitely collecting more because we don't want to have ETH which cannot be converted to Euro as well later on. Um, and transfer ETH means basically sending it to that smart contract where you can withdraw until end of September and where you will get your uh, tokens later on. Um, receiving ATS token after the 26th of October and swapping those tokens which are on the Ethereum blockchain to coins on the artist blockchain happens end of year. We plan to have the uh, mainnet launched end of the year, basically assisting you with a software which makes it easy that basically you move from, from your ATS token on the Ethereum blockchain to the artist blockchain uh, as simple as possible. So this kind of, the ones which will go in there, they will see, uh, they will see this kind of form asking a couple of uh, informations and, uh, and of course the address and a couple of more things uh, are there throughout the whole process. So that, that's uh, going to be live tomorrow. Yeah, and that's going to be the changed uh, address or the changed web page. Basically, if you're going to uh, artist.eco, you see that on those roll-ups everywhere, uh, you will uh, see that kind of page and uh, you will have a counter down to the lock date, so the end of September, so that basically you can, you can set yourself a timer, you will see the, the actual daily kind of bonus, which is kind of decreased every day, and uh, basically also the funding, which is going from tomorrow till uh, end, of, end of the whole crowd sale. So our funding uh, goal is 5 million um, and the maximum what actually can be uh, raised is 22.5 uh, million. So the hard cap is 22.5, uh, rather little less because basically you have all these kind of uh, bonus tokens which will reduce the amount a little. So I would estimate something like 20 is, is the kind of hard cap if the bonus tokens are, um, are taken out. So that's basically it, and uh, we're going towards the next kind of Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thomas. Uh, I gotta say, Thomas, you're gonna stay somewhere near the stage because I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a question. Is anybody in the room that has questions regarding the introduction, regarding Block 42, regarding Artis, regarding drinks? Not even that? Are you all happy? So no more questions. You, here you go. Please. The question regarding Artis. Um, yeah. Who will be able to run a free node or a master node or how do you select them? Well, the, the free node is actually something which uh, should be fairly simple uh, to run. Um, so I would assume that somebody with uh, sufficient skills to set up a, a server and, and, and running that one uh, should be just enough. Uh, the, the, the trust node itself, because it's, um, uh, it's important that we have a, a very decentralized kind of consensus uh, layer for the nodes. So they should not be run like, you know, it's like 15, 15 consensus nodes by us and one by somebody else, like you probably know from NEO um, and, uh, and some other blockchains where you have this kind of very centralized and it's promised that it's going to be centralized, decentralized at some point. We want to be sure that it is decentralized organizational wise, uh, regional wise. Uh, from a legal point of view, so there will be a setup and then there will be a selection among a part of those trust nodes that basically a new one joining is actually kind of checked if that kind of uh, things are in order. So it, therefore also the staking is fairly high and of course the requirements for uh, the positioning of that one is, is fairly high. But um, 
also from a technical point of view, we, you can expect that this is, uh, this is uh, technology which is run for, uh, for Ethereum. Uh, so it's basically a changed software from a parity implementation of the nodes for Ethereum. About 90% of the nodes which run for Ethereum are parity nodes. So people can run those. So if you can run a parity or a Ethereum node, you can run this one. Question answered. Any other questions? Yes. Also regarding artists, um, two questions. First, um, why um, have you chosen such a long investment period for the GD? And what's happen happening with the unsorted tokens? Okay. Um, the the long investment period actually is uh, is due to a couple of reasons. Uh, one reason. Uh, what we just recently made, were made aware of is that uh, in Austria the, the authorities have kind of changed their perception towards looking at kind of uh, token sales which are defined as a voucher. And, uh, and uh, there we are going to uh, have, because of that change kind of view at it, and that's rather a new development, uh, we will have a question towards the Finanzmarktaufsicht uh, and we would like to have that answered so that we can say, okay, is it possible to do it in Austria or not? Also, we are doing a, a fund, the foundation uh, that's also kind of taking some time uh, to, uh, to be answered. In the meantime, we are also looking at a possible different place outside of Austria, so to make sure that basically everybody who's investing will have a proper legal setup whenever the tokens are distributed. So making sure that the legal setup for the whole thing is absolutely waterproof and giving us enough time for doing this one. So that's a kind of investor kind of focus, making sure that you are not in limbo when having some tokens and the organization behind is not is not set up right. The other thing, of course, which helps a lot is kind of spreading the word and building up the community far better uh, than, uh, than if you're doing a short token sale and doing everything at once. So basically, we can, we can develop the tech, uh, we can build up the community and do the, all the legal stuff uh, in between and give the investors the security basically uh, if, if whatever kind of reason you're not believing in the project anymore, you can safely pull out your money. Um, yeah, what happens with the unsold tokens? Uh, they will be kept for later, but the promise is that they won't be sold below market price. So if there is further sales, the sales will uh, will be definitely not below market price and it will be definitely not below the price which is actually given out. So, making sure that all the investors are safe on that side. Yeah, happy with that? Thanks, sir. Um, how long are the unsold tokens locked up? The unsold tokens, you mean, uh, you mean the ones, if there are unsold tokens? Uh, Uh, well, the, 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 the tokens which are going into the foundation, they are basically in the hands of the foundation. As long as there is no foundation, there won't be any kind of tokens. Of course, they are available, but the foundation has an intrinsic interest to push basically the, or has a mandatory obligation to make the artist blockchain successful. Okay, so so the, they are not locked like for two years in the small No, they are not. You know, it's like, I think, I think it's, uh, it's a thing which is very important that people have a stake in it and then they have an intrinsic interest uh, not to dump, dump kind of tokens and, and ruin the whole project. So, therefore... <laughs> so, I, I, don't, I don't think in, in locking really increases the legitimacy. So, so, it's really like if, if locking the, the coins is necessary, uh, or it seems to be necessary, then uh, for me, it seems that people are not believing in the project anyway. Do you have yeah. Any other questions? Why the Facebook, apps, uh, Facebook icon has a down? <laughs> <laughs> That's my, my, my second best 
or the, the one of the one of those questions I really like. So uh, I'm kind of all the time thinking about getting out of Facebook, and uh, I'm always kind of in projects where I can't really get out. So basically, I always have a couple of Facebook pages I cannot dump and cannot move on uh, to somebody else. Um, but I'm not really anymore a big fan of Facebook, and uh, and well, I never was actually. I don't have a very old account. And therefore, you know, it's like we're we're standing for uh, in the Lab 10 Collective. We have a focus on privacy, which is a kind of a problem with Facebook, uh, and all the data-driven kind of exploitation you find in Facebook uh, is, in my opinion, uh, at least with a turned sign of Facebook. So, yeah, you know, if you can get out of Facebook, just do it, or don't get in, please. <laughs> Um, what's your plan to market artists internationally? Because now I think it's very Austrian focused and there are a lot of great places like Singapore or South Korea which are very crypto friendly, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we uh, we just recently um, uh, got a new advisor, which is Richard Kastelein. He's quite extremely well connected on Asian markets. Uh, as well as Europe and uh, and other areas as well. So he's kind of getting around a lot. He has a lot of connections and uh, he's uh, the one which will help our marketing team uh, to get also into those markets and get the word out uh, in, a, in a far better way to uh, spread it there because currently there is such a buzz. If you don't have the right entrance key, you won't get there because everybody kind of looks critically at every project and you really need somebody who is kind of opening the doors and give you credibility and that people look at the project at all. And therefore, we looked for a good advisor which is known in those markets. Maybe one more question. Uh, on one of your slides, you, you showed us that you have done a pre-sale, a private round, where you have collected, I think, one million. Um, is it true? No, no, no. no. Well, they, they basically the, the, the private sale and the public sale, they basically go on until, uh, until the, the very kind of uh, the token generation event and the 30th of uh, September. So basically you're, uh, they are running in parallel because we are having this kind of possibility uh, to, uh, yeah, to to run it that way because financially we're kind of on that side that we can actually afford it. So it's like it's like something we are not kind of eager to. The one million is just like, you know, it's like it's not the starting point tomorrow. So it's just kind of a graphical thing which is kind of implemented there. So you will you will see uh, um, you will see whenever we put some. Uh, something on on a on a private sale there we will have a jump there on uh, on the on the bar it's not going directly into the same smart contract so basically you have to believe us that we are not putting fake money in there or fake kind of uh, kind of representations um, and uh, and we're kind of having a couple of additional talks uh, on on the private sale as well. And those, as I said, so they are all uh, above 100k, and uh, so that's a rather a bigger number for for a lot of investors, and uh, and they want to talk a little more. Okay, um, what's the bonus for those private sales? It's 10% flat, 10% flat in tokens. So basically, you get 10% additional bonus tokens. Well, for uh, if you're in private, uh, they're it is uh, this tomorrow it's like four percent and then it's slightly decreasing with every day uh, like on the ten percent per anno uh, calculation until the TG. And is there any kind of lockup period for those private person? Well the private they, they also get the tokens on the twenty sixth. So basically from there on they, they have uh, there is a, a one month locking period defined that's rather because uh, it's important that uh, you don't have to distribute everything on the first day. So basically, it gives you a kind of 
time until all the tokens are distributed and there is a one month locking in, in the contract for the private sale. So there is not, not really, and for, for, for public, uh, uh, basically as soon as you have the tokens, we are going for listing on decentralized exchanges and then we are anyway going for listing on, uh, on, on normal crypto exchanges as soon as we have the coin. So we are not intending to have for a couple of months trying to get listing on a major exchange for the token, then basically moving to the coin, that's meaningless. Anybody else? Who's keen on knowing more? Or knowing more about Block 42? No more questions? I've got one question for Block 42. <laughs> Please do it. Uh, how can I invest? <laughs> that, you need a microphone? Good question, thank you. <laughs> so, actually, uh, I try to move away from here. What we tried the last couple of weeks is to, to set up a legal framework in order to be allowed to get money from every person here in the room, for example. Um, but that's not that easy here in Austria because we would be like an official investment fund and also the investment fund is also allowed to take money from people who are accredited investors. So the way just we have a dog right now and you give me, I don't know, 10,000 euros and I invest in crypto for that, um, won't work. So our approach is now to attract some bigger investors. We already have attracted some big investors um, where we can start right now. And the idea is to yeah, invest or fund the company and we would like to, or we invest with this company in cryptocurrency and blockchain startups. So no private deals, as I said, but any, anything up to 1,000, 1,000, 100,000 euros is our approach. And yeah, we're looking for some more investors, of course, to, to increase our portfolio value and in order to get better deals, get um, earlier in good projects and yeah right now we we've just started with some investors so if anybody of you has more than 100,000 100, euro just feel free to talk to me um, yeah that's our approach right now now I got a question do you plan on selling your ratings if you're not allowed to join to let people in to join you do you have any kind of plan to sell your ratings uh, yeah, that that would be a second approach for us. So, um, as I explained before, we, we rate um, many blockchain projects. And, of course, it would be or could be a good um, advice to invest in the same projects we do. Because we do it 24-7 and I think we know quite good what we are doing. Um, so, that will be an option, of course, yeah, of course, that um, we have some, like, a subscription mo model, maybe with artists, you can pay us constantly, and in order to get some, yeah, ratings of new ICO investments, definitely. Anybody else? Why 42 in your name? Why? <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. laughs> um, there are several answers to that. <laughs> One would be that 42 is the answer to everything, if you know the, the, the movie. Um, the second answer would be, it's just a random number. Um, the third answer would be, all up to 42, all domains up to 42 was already sold. So <laughs> 42 was the first domain which was free. Um, but we also get the .deck, so .com is also not available. Um, yeah, just, just a random, random thing. And you have to say that our goal for the year is to make 42x on our investments. <laughs> so, well then, well, let's call it a night. I want to say again thank you to Thomas Lechner who gave us a great introduction of blockchain as far as I think. Thank you also to Lucas 
and Thomas Zeinsinger who showed their projects. Uh, also a big thanks to uh, Studo. Uh, they wanted me to say there's a student startup festival next week. They're also having a job burse next week and uh, Manuel over there is taking care if you want to know everything about that. Thank you very much again. Max Tetinek from Coinfinity. If you want to change fiat into crypto, there's the ATM over there. Otherwise, join us for drinks over there. Thank you very much for coming to us. And uh, yeah, don't, don't forget to go on artist.eco and subscribe for our Telegram channel. Um, one more thing. So basically, we have a couple of people here which uh, have brought some cryptos with them. And uh, we have prepared some, some um, lanyards. So uh, to basically the ones which have crypto, they will get the lanyard uh, where you can approach uh, in private if you want to and exchange something. So uh, on the lanyard, you will have the coins they actually have with them, uh, not the name, uh, just the coins. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much again. And cheers.